Do a quick. All right, guys. What are we watching today? Well, today we got some fun stuff. We're going to actually watch some, we'll call them highlight reels, you know, fish we caught oh, in 2020. Is this, is this us fishing? Yeah. And some friends. Are they going to watch us watching us fishing? Yeah. That's happening, right? I wonder if somebody yeah. will make a reaction video to this and then <laughs> other people will watch, watch the reaction watch video <laughs> to us watching ourselves fish. But yeah, these are uh, catches of our 2021 and uh, 2022 is right around the corner. I think this is a perfect time to uh, put this video out. All the rivers are blown out where we're at. We can't fish right now. Christmas is coming up, so we're all getting ready to hang out with our families. The New Year's right around the corner. Um, what's your resolution? You know um, you've been thinking about something. Catch more fish? Catch more fish. Catch more steelhead? Yep. That's always my goal. I guess as far as the uh, resolution for the channel goes, just producing more content, producing steadier content, refining the content down to the kind of stuff you guys want to watch. Um, exactly. Less crazy long intros and more just smashing big, beautiful fish. I think I think he nailed it on the head. I think our goal is to just kind of cater to more of what you guys are looking for and what you guys want. So keep up on them comments. You guys are killing it. We love all the love, and we really, really appreciate you guys. So, without further ado, let's get into this thing. I remember this day. It was super, super cold. Like, oh, and you had the warm, you had the electric vest and yeah. the hand warmer, and I didn't. I stopped fishing and tried to make a fire on the on the <laughs> side of the river. <laughs> Have you guys ever noticed that in the morning, right when the sun comes up, is like is when it's the coldest. It's like before that in the dark, it's not that cold, but right when the sun comes up. Don't let that deter you when you see somebody. If they leave their spot, go fish it. Doesn't mean it's fished out. Just cast, man. Just cast. You ain't gonna catch nothing if you don't cast. Actually, you might catch <laughs> the nothing double if negative. You don't cast. <laughs> You're not gonna. I, catch my anything. words aren't always perfect. You're not right. gonna catch anything if you don't cast. <laughs> you might catch nothing if you don't cast. Yeah, my English is a little off. I was, I was just being. I think this stupid. was like second cast too. And there was, there was two. Isn't this the hole? There was two dudes in this hole right before we got here. Oh yeah, we, we were, we were, uh, I, this is the hole we hike. wanted all day. We were hiking in a book. That's right. We were sitting in the car. We were sitting in the car all morning and we were waiting to see if anybody else was going to pull up on the river on us. And we yep. saw those lights pull up on the river and we just hopped out and jammed down there real quick. And, um, we fished those top holes and those guys snuck in around us and got the hole that we wanted to fish before we could get down to it. Cause we didn't realize they were below us on the river, but they missed one. A beauty too. I think it, I think it hit a number five blue if I'm not mistaken. Not that I fish too much anything else for steelhead, but I'm pretty sure that might even have been a hammered blade. I just remember my hands freezing all day long, even with that hand warmer. It was so cold. There was frost. There was ice dripping off things. They're not dripping off things, but there was like little icicles like on like all the leaves and and grass and stuff. I look like a rookie right here. I don't know, sometimes you get those fish the bank and you think they're ready, but they're not ready. When it's a, when just it's a, a clipper steelhead like that, I letting, know, it, letting it just run back out into the middle of the river. Just, you know, a lot, a lot of people give us a hard time for not having a net. But you just gave that fish a round too. I know. And like fish, any other time, that fish would have popped it, off it, probably. It was, and yeah, it dude, it essentially, <laughs> it essentially kicked your ass in round one. It really did. Look at it now. It's I still mean, working. You, right. you did eat that fish eventually. You took that fish <laughs> yeah. and you ate it. So, so I won in the long run. So you run, won the but... fight, but. God, such a beauty. Beauty, just bullet chrome. And I don't know why I'm sitting next to the bank with a clipper and instead of getting it out of there and away from the bank. Yep. Look at how chunky the body is on that fish for the size of its head. Yeah, it's definitely uh, that's something that that's one, that's a wild thing that you see with steelhead where salmon when you get a fish that's like a pretty decent size its head's usually really developed and it's got those gnarly jaws on it you do see beaks you'll see a beak on a steelhead sometimes you see like a large um you know formed out beak and a lot of coloration on a large buck steelhead or something like that sometimes but a lot of those chrome hen that you catch they just look like a giant trout right the little tiny head all right, what do we got next? Asher in the sunshine. This ain't my, Oregon. That my patented skirted up ballyhoo. Let's pause that real quick. Look, at, explain these cuts you got going on in this fish here. 
real quick. Um, there's a little like uh, rudders. You put those little rudders in the tail. So like when you're fishing for salmon or something like that up here, you always want to get that wobble and that spin. But um, you really want a, a clean, straight swim. Um, when so that's you, just making it do that when it's going through. Yeah, the yeah. And so like the little rudder will cause that tail to whip. Um, the skirt over the nose causes your bait to usually have like a little bit more of a streamlined position. If your if your hooks offset a tiny bit, it'll cause the bait to wobble, and the tail catches the water, whips out real hard the other direction. So those little rudders cutting the tail just cause it to kind of whip back and forth and give it a real lifelike action. Um, well, now you get to see how to. Uh, you're catching a barracuda here, I think. Let's roll this thing. Barracuda trolling. Those ballyhoo are just beautiful, shiny little, they're a type of flying fish. And it's what um, you run for like all the pelagics. Those ballyhoo are a type of flying fish. They're like a real um, top water, long, skinny, shiny little skipping fish. And like if you're pulling in in a boat in like any kind of tropical area and you see little fish running across the top of the water, it's probably a ballyhoo. And it's like the main go-to bait for like all the big pelagic fish. People will troll things like ladyfish or blue runners or mullet or stuff like that even. But um, a cleaned up, properly rigged ballyhoo is like the best thing you could run for like swordfish, sailfish, and um, Makes wahoo, sense. all of that kind of stuff. When I go down to like Florida and stuff, that's what they're selling mostly as like their inline rigged up, ready to go baits. Is, you know, ballyhoos. Those ballyhoos, totally. You know what I love about this? I love that it's like you, you look like you're on a family boat. You look like you got like this is the this is the a, family auntie house. Auntie Susan in the back. That's you know, you got Brandon. You know, you got like all the homies. That's Brandon's mom, Tracy, and then um, the gentleman in white is uh, Robin. That's the owner of the boat, and it's um, my buddy Brandon with <laughs> the just, jersey on. It is to me. Oh yeah, you it's went a full out with family the family trip. and you threw the rod in. Totally, you know, right? totally. You're it's like I'm cool. fishing. It's a full family trip, yeah. Um, El Chapo and Lady Jessie are both there also. This was actually a really, really fun adventure out for the day. But yeah, barracuda are like kind of one of the main go-to fish. There's a lot of them, they're predator fish, and um, when you're trolling, they're gonna be one of the things that you're gonna hook up into the most. And barracuda don't have the stigma in Belize that they have in other parts of the world. And um, they're a totally targeted um, food fish. People yeah, even say in they, Florida, they're poisonous because it's something yeah. they eat. Yeah, it's really. I think it's. I think even in Florida, they're only poisonous for like two or three months of the year. Dude, everybody's pumped on the boat right now. Like it doesn't get better than that, really. Yeah, look, look at how stoked the big he is. Smile on Brandon's face is pretty good. <laughs> we just got the barracuda that we've been looking for. Man, that's been like eleven years of work, man. <laughs> how big do you think that thing was? Um, I mean, it's it's maybe 30 inches, something like that. It's a pretty long fish. When I when I think about its its length, it's a pretty big fish. Um, it probably only weighs 10 or 15 pounds. Like 10 pounds. Yeah, they're um, they're long, skinny fish. I mean, trolling yeah. on a pirate ship, catching barracuda, doesn't get much more. Uh, yeah, it's the, pretty. <laughs> it's pretty piratey. It's pretty piratey. <laughs> oh, this one. So this to me is. It wasn't about the fish. It was about the experience. So me and the wife rented kayaks in Florida and we're in this back estuary creek wetland kind of thing that literally it felt like Jurassic Park. You know, we saw alligators, we saw lizards, we saw snakes, we caught fish. But the, this moment right here, I think this is it. So I'm, we're checking out this alligator. And I forget that I even have my gear in the water, which at this time I'm using some live bait, like a live shiner or something like that. And, and I get a fish on and I'm like, oh my God, this alligator is going to freak out and try to eat my fish or eat me or eat my wife. Alligators but, will, will rush your hooked up fish. Yeah, they love that splash, man. It's like, the, like I think I even say a dinner bell on there. Just a little, little spotted gar. And I'll tell you, I grabbed this fish and they are pure muscle like literally yeah, just, like a hard just body. an armored body like there was no squeezing it there was no nothing and it was slippery as hell but i'm more worried about the alligator coming off the bank and sliding up underneath my kayak there i'm like having the wife watch my back well that's what that's a fish i've never caught but luckily the gator did not come and chase us 
and uh, we made our way down the river, and dude, it was such a blast. I, I, I'm going back in a month or so, and we're doing that right away. Like it was, it was quite the experience. Oh, this is the big one. All right, this, this one, it, it doesn't really need much explaining other than this is the biggest hatchery fish I've ever. Oh, this is why banked. I was in Belize still, yep, and yep. I was like missing steelhead fishing. I remember I sent you a picture. I'm like, oh my god, you're yeah. not gonna believe what I got. And at first, when I hooked it, you know, it splashed around and kicked around, and it looked like a good fish. But once Ryan trods with me right here in this, you'll you'll see him in a minute. But right when he grabs it, that's where I realize it's clipped. Because usually the you know the bigger fish are usually wild fish. Um, this this river in general actually kicks out some pretty good hatchery fish. But uh, I, I know he's big, but I didn't realize how big he was until Ryan gets a handle on his tail. I got lucky. I remember the the hook being just like barely in there too. He was meant to go home with me, I guess. So. Wow! Look at him go, dude. Nuts, dude. What a chunker. And he, look at the car. Like at first, I was like, "Oh, it's a darker fish." But then when he grabs, like right when he grabs, try to tail him. Try to gaff him, dude. Try to gaff him. Look at the girth on that tail. And I start freaking out right there. I just, I think I say, "Oh my gosh!" like eight times. Holy cow, bro. Holy cow, bro. I like Ryan's all like the tender carry up to the. Oh my he's like, don't kick, don't kick. Oh my gosh. Just a complete that is a toad. That's a toad. Look at the rosy cheeks on him. Wow, what a toad. See, like, like that has a beak on it, but again, you can just see there's just a, there's a difference in the head of that fish. Like, if that head was smaller, you'd right. be like, it, it just wouldn't make sense. It's a different shape head than that other steelhead's. The, the shape of the Dude, head. look at this. Look at this. Uh, look at the belly on that thing. What a just ridiculous. And his color is amazing. What a monster. He looks way nicer fish. than he did in the water. But, man, I will never forget that moment anytime I'm ever, even at that river, at any river. Look at the size of it, dude. And it cut amazing. I think I kicked a couple steaks to different homies and I got to show off the size of the steaks. They're like, oh, nice salmon. Nah, bro. You know how many times I've had like, oh, it's a nice salmon he caught. I'm like, that's not a salmon. I'm like, what? It's a big fish. Tank. I think that fish went 37 and three quarter inches by 19 girth. It put it around like 18, three. It's a chrome dome winner right there. It was, yeah, for sure. Ooh, it's a Katie. Is this Katie? fun so neither of us were there for this but um i was kind of excited when i saw the images of this episode you guys you guys know katie she's just a fish catching machine fish big fish are attracted to her oh is this the uh, paddlefish this is the paddlefish yeah so if you guys don't know too much about paddlefish, um, you know, it's a Midwest, East, Eastern kind of fish, and they're bottom feeders. They feed on algae, plankton, stuff like that. So catching them with normal rods and reels and rigs it doesn't work that way. So the way they fish for them is they snag them, but that's the way they actually fish for them over there. They just drop big weights through and, and just try to, try to grab them, which, you know, we frown on that kind of stuff here, but, you know, even in Alaska, they snag salmon and stuff like that. Um, so it's, it's just you know, a different, different rules. For it's different. just a different type of fishing. It's one thing. It's also a healthy fishery. Yeah. You know, they got enough that they can do that. It's one stuff. thing if, um, you know, the the technique that you're using <laughs> is I love this is to go snag with. fish. I've snagged um, squid. You know, right. Central America with a three prong hook. You see, like, you get into big schools of squid. Snagged bait fish. Before. I mean, if you haven't snagged a fish, I'm not talking intentionally. I'm talking just while you're fishing, spinner fishing, whatever. If you haven't snagged a fish before on accident, you haven't fished enough. I mean, I hate having to snag fish because it takes so long to. I'll tell you what, though. If I walk down to a river 
and I saw a giant paddlefish, and it was le- okay. and it was legal to retain and eat that giant paddlefish by and snagging I, and it. I, and I threw bait at it and lures at it all day long, and everybody laughed at me. And they said, "Nah, man, you can't throw bait at that fish. You got to snag that thing." I roll down there to Cabela's and get one of those giant <laughs> fist-sized treble hooks. You know those giant, giant treble hooks. Right. Oh, just because oh, yeah. just because you can't do that stuff here doesn't mean we wouldn't do it there. <laughs> I mean, here they. They'd use tridents to stab muskies and stuff. Oh, yeah, man. Back in the day, I I knew some farmers that went up to the creeks with uh, pitchforks to go hunt salmon. Dude, this thing's a bulldog. Like, it hasn't... It's not surfacing. It's acting like a sturgeon, It's like a sturgeon, yeah. It's like like the the south's equivalent of a sturgeon. Giant bottom feeder that just kind of swims around. I like this net. Like, what are you going to do with that? (laughs) (laughs) I love this guy she fishes with. Scotty. Yeah, Scotty. Scotty's the man. <laughs> You're the man, Scotty. Good luck with that net, bud. <laughs> Look at that thing. It's just a prehistoric dinosaur, you know, just like the sturgeon we got here. It's just a different shape. It's like they're a bottom feeder, though. I mean, I'd have to look into it, but tell us in the comments, like, what do they have the bill for? I think they use it to, to scoop, to dig to up dig the around? mud, to scoop in the mud, yeah. I don't know, maybe one of you Midwesters can uh, chime in and let us know. Such a cool fish, though. You know, the grass is always greener on the other side. Like, I want to catch one of these really bad. But then if you if you ask somebody that lives there, you're like, hey, I want to come over and catch one of these, they'd they probably laugh at you. They didn't have that paddle on the front of the nose. How would they get How would they be all state ping pong champions? <laughs> get it, Scotty. Wow. Wow. They really are a little like they have a, a, a similar body form as a sturgeon, they really kind do. of, but they really do look like a shark at the same time. Like, see the underside of the yeah, jaw the the, there, the mouth like the way is. their mouth is formed. Yeah. Look at that thing. Get out of the way, Scotty. There. Oh my gosh. What? Dude, a it wild look, yeah. What a fish. wild looking. Look at that bill, dude. So rad. Good form, straight down release. And Katie's on cloud nine. Nice work, Katie. Nice work, Scotty. Oh, here we go. Hey, who's this guy? Oh, no. Is this the... I think this is the big barracuda that I was talking about earlier where I was like, I get one too in a bit. I like how you're using the uh, the hut from the boat as your uh, your rod as my angle. As my yeah, as your little, little leverage your, uh, on leverage, it. Yeah. Yep. Your fulcrum. This was another full family trip. Um, right there in the back, you could see El T- Chapo and Lady Jessie and Tracy on the boat again. We brought the whole family out. This was just a couple of days after the previous one. They like taking you out because you're like catching all the fish for them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was buying rum and catching fish, and we were we were cooking up at the end of the day. And um, me and Tracy have been friends longer than me and Brandon. Tracy was one of the first people I met when I came to the island, and then me and Brandon are like. You know, we're like brothers now, and so it's it's really like family. I need to get down there. I need to get down there. This is a really nice barracuda, actually. This was a, this was a big. Look fish. at that water. Could you see like? Yeah, it's probably between seven, eight, and fifteen feet right there, or something like that. It could be as deep as fifteen feet right there, and you can just see the bottom, like from the boat, you can see it crystal crystal clearish. Right. Perfect rod for And we're inside the reef right now. Yeah, you can see that fish is down. That went down pretty deep just then, too. It's like the Belizean steelhead with teeth. Ooh, and I almost messed up right there. I almost uh, pulled the hook out. You got to find enjoyment in that. You don't, really, that. you don't get to do that as much here. Oh, yeah, gaff So you get to go there and just gaff fish. What a beast. Look at the head on that thing. The barracuda is the opposite. They got a huge head. And Giant, like a more like, like narrow body. Um, I remember as soon as I picked up that fish and I held it up and looked at the camera thinking, I'm going to get a treble hook in my arm right now, showing this fish off to the camera. There is three big treble hooks in that valley. At least two treble hooks and a big single, but I think there's three big treble hooks in that valley. And um, I've had it happen to me before where you pick up a fish and it starts freaking out and it jams a hook into your arm and I'm holding holding the barracuda up and it's hanging on the uh, hanging on the gaff and I can kind of see 
right there, like tucked off to the side of it, just these 30 giant <laughs> hooks, like right up next to my arm, and I'm on a wobbly sailboat, and I was like, oh man, I think I'm... Somehow it didn't. Yeah, somehow it didn't happen. I think I might have uh, uh, actually off the fish when I gaffed it. Look at the teeth on this thing. Like, that was insane. They're like the size of dog's teeth, dude. Right. Can you imagine that thing chomping on your arm? Um, it could definitely do some damage to you. I know I've heard of, like, jewelry. Like yeah, there's a stuff. lot of urban legends about um, barracudas, um, you know, biting necklaces or, or um, bracelets or earrings or things like that. There's a story in Belize that you hear a lot that's probably true, but it's probably not at the same time of a British soldier back in the day who had a set of dog tags on like a, a chain around his neck and the dog tags fluttering caused a barracuda to like rush at it and they cut his throat and so crazy let's get back to it <laughs> all right so okay this is ryan's yeah this is ryan in hawaii and they're on kayaks about a, i think they're about a mile off maybe a half mile off right here we're going to have to add Hawaii to our um, arena of fishing if we're going to really crush the West Coast out. Right. You know, Hawaii is kind of beyond the West Coast, but it's the... Well, this dude he's fishing with here seems like a really cool dude. So they're just... All right, so right here, the guide's freaking out because he caught a fish that they normally just go and spear hunt. They don't catch them on, on, on line or on tackle. And so he's freaking out. He's calling his buddy right now saying, dude, you're not going to believe it. Ryan just caught this. I think it's a, a Palani. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah. Insane they eat coral. fish. They yeah. don't normally take hook and line. Yeah, they don't normally take hook and line because they're always eating like rocks and coral and crustaceans and stuff like that. And, and that guide actually was like, I've never, ever, ever caught one on, on hook and line before. And so Ryan had a little special moment with him catching one. Yeah, what a beautiful fish. Speaking of fishing. Back to it. What's this? Gotta be stripers. Is that Steve Arino? Oh, I forgot about this one. You know what this is? Oh. Oh, this is my striper yep. on the pike minnow. Yeah, that's Steve holding a little so pike minnow. So Steve catches a pike minnow and Asher's like, give me that thing. I got some I got some hate mail for um, showing this for showing this. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, this this old boy was like, where'd you uh, where'd you learn to use pike minnows for live bait? And I was like, oh, you know, I've been doing stuff. I've he I hear things. You know, there's the internet. He's like, well, don't go telling nobody else. <laughs> and that was before this episode came out. And then this episode came out, and I did. I got two different messages that were like, don't go telling people to use live pike. But, it was, but it was the same guy. <laughs> that was probably, but they were both the same <laughs> <Right>. dude. <laughs> so, little secret there. Yeah, a little secret. Don't be afraid to throw those trash pike minnow on there instead of killing them and throwing them on the bank. Or you don't want to put too in. big a one on it. Uh, uh, you know, a real big one's going to get you into a bigger fish. A big, a big striped bass will eat any size pike minnow. They don't get big enough that a giant striped bass won't won't still eat one. And for real, they don't. I mean, you can get a big pike minnow. You, find, you get that five pound pike minnow. A big striped bass will eat it. But um, the larger your pike minnow, the more of the chance that you're you're um, uh, singling out or just get the, past that. Yeah, yeah. The larger the pike minnow, the less likely some of those smaller, more you know, five ten pound stripers are gonna are gonna go for your. Uh, this your bait. I remember this striper being not not long, but like a football. Like, wasn't this the one that had crawdad in his belly and stuff? Yep, yep. Crawdad and a um, and a sculpin, so he was out there eating live stuff. And I think this fish weighed um, like six something on the scale yep. that we've now decided it was a little faulty. Scale's about a pound short. So it was like 15. Yeah, sure. it was like 15. <laughs> no, but I, but I do think that, that scale, um, we tested it and it was weighing up about a pound short. A little bit later, I, I calibrated it. Um, it still might be weighing up short though. Uh, you can um, probably see his rig. He didn't talk much about it, but he's got, I think in the episode, if you guys, all the all these clips are going to be in the link down below. You guys can check them all out. But. Uh, He's got a bobber rig to try to keep that uh, pike minnow from just sitting on the bottom. I did kind of a weird floating live bait kind of a rig where I took a bead that you would usually use for like a bobber and egg setup, and I put the bead as a stopper all the way up my line where you would to stop your bobber, but then I put a sliding weight on there so that the weight would slide all the way back to where that would stop, and I actually clipped the bobber to the swivel where my leader was attached. 
So once it all hit the water, the bobber floated up about 10, 15 feet until it hit that little stopper knot, caused that live bait fish to swim around and maybe that 10, 15 feet of water instead of be pegged to the bottom, that maybe helped uh, keep it from getting all tangled up in debris and get into that strike zone. I don't remember. So. I don't remember on the episode if it got broken down very much, but like literally, he brain powered this rig right there, put the pike minnow on there, threw it out. It was out there what? Literally like 15 few minutes, minutes. Yeah, a few 10 minutes. minutes. There was a lot of debris in the water, and we were just tucking out our lines and weeds and stuff. We're all building up on them and dragging them down. And I wanted to try putting this pike minnow out live, but I didn't know what to put out to that was gonna. Um, not just cause it to get drugged to the bottom and get pegged it down there. So I wanted to give it a little bit of a float to kind of, um, you know, get it up off of it a little bit. And, and then I swear we thought it was debris in the first place. Yep. And then it just yep. And then, then that rig went. worked out. So rad. Yeah, that was a fun fish. That was a nice striper. All right, what's next? Just you sticking a, just you sticking a salmon um, out there. Oh yeah, it's the jetty. Out there at I guess you can't really call it jetty right now because it's low tide, we're on the sand, but technically we're jetty fishing. Right. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is my first trip to the jetty this season for, for salmon, and uh, a good hour or two in, I hooked one up, and it was one of those days that, you know, that was it. We cast the rest of the day. And I don't think we hooked anything else. Nobody else hooked anything. I think we saw one other fish down the way. So I got super lucky. You know, the fish gods were shining down on me. Um, it's not a big fish, but it is a perfect size fish. You go out to the river and there'll be 20 guys there throwing lures and nobody will catch a fish except for Chris. Chris will stick a fish. I get lucky. Every single time. time. I'm the opposite. You go out to the river and there'll be 20 guys and everyone's catching fish. <laughs> and I cast over and over and over again and I can't catch anything. That's because he's the salty guy. You put him on a jetty and you're trying to figure out what he's running so you can catch as many fish as he's catching. <laughs> but there's a beauty to having the low tide with the sand. You know, we could, we wanted to net him because there is a lot of sea lions and seals out here. And in the past couple of years, it's been getting worse and worse, and we really just didn't want him to get smoked suddenly. Um, so we were trying to get him in the net as quick as possible. But honestly, in our eyes, the size of the fish, we thought it was a wild coho. And, but right away, Garrett knew it. Every dog has his day. And it happened to be a Chinook that I get to keep. That's <laughs> just so dirty. Oh, nice hat. I think you're wearing the hat that I'm wearing right now. Yeah. It's hard to, maybe that's the hat, you know, you can't wear that hat without catching a fish, you know? People laugh. Perfect you, size. You ran down there and cleaned sand onto the fish? <laughs> right. I put salt on it. Just a beauty. We had nothing else after that. Um, I mean, sometimes you go out there and, and, you know, there's a pot of fish rolling around and, you know, all the homies are, are getting fish. But sometimes you go out there and nothing's really biting just luck I'd say my lure was in the right spot at the right time in fact actually I think at that very moment the other two anglers with me which I think was uh, Garrett and Steve they both took a break and I always think that when I take a break a fish is gonna get hooked so it makes me keep casting you know sometimes you'd be up trying to get a snack and your homies down there fighting a the fish when you've been fishing all morning and haven't caught nothing so <laughs> anyway <laughs> All right, so this is Katie. I, I believe it's a snook. Listen to her. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I've never caught a snook more than like, I don't know, like a half a pound, maybe 12 inches. They've all been little tiny, tiny snook. Caught a couple of my cast net, but it's been like the unicorn fish for me. I've, um,. I'm kind of the same way. I've gone down to a beach where everybody was catching snook, like I was just talking about, but everyone was catching fish, and I went down there and um, caught snapper. And all <laughs> the dudes were stoked. They were like, wow, you're catching these big red snapper. Like, what no. are you doing? And I was like, I'm here to catch a snook. It's on my bucket list. They are like, yeah, we're all catching that. snook. You can't catch one. Yeah, I want a snook like that. That's what I want. I want great eating fish, too. That's what I've heard. My dad actually lives in the snook cap of the world, and I'll be there in a month, so hopefully I can stick one out. Yeah, that was a beautiful snook. I mean, I heard, from what I've heard is, is the Floridians, what do I say? They're on the same 
page with steelhead on their snook, as in they're on the hunt for a 40 inch snook, as we are on the hunt for a 40 inch steelhead. You know, they're, that 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 big dog, totally pig snook. Totally down in um down in like uh, Southern California, it's all about yellowtail and calicos. And up here, it's all about steelhead and salmon. Yep. You get over to the northeast, it's all about stripers. And you get down there into the southeast, and it's all about tarpon, snook, snook and tarpon. And, you know. They're a blast. Like I said, the, green, the grass is always green on the other side. So it's like those fish that I haven't caught, I want to catch those. But people are laughing at me. They're like, this thing barely fights. You're catching steelhead that do triple backflip aerials and salmon that just rip you down in the river, you know. And, and obviously around the rest of the country you've got um, fish fanatics too. Don't let any of you uh, drum heads or carp junkies get all mad at me because I forgot to mention you guys. Of course, the whole <laughs> the whole belly of the country, the whole the, the whole center gut of the country is just ditch pickle fanatics. <laughs> we love ditch pickles. We got plenty of episodes, but ditch hilarious pickle. name. <laughs> Next ditch pickle. This is, is that... my, this is where my jankly net failed. And so I, I grabbed the net instead of the cam. Is that J-Bell? Yep, yep this is J-Bell. Sorry. Yeah, this was J-Bell's first, um, first keeper salmon uh, um, of his life, I believe. Um, or maybe, no, he went on some charters. So this was J-Bell's first keeper salmon in a long time. Definitely his first fish. You got to know he's season. a major, major fly guy. So he's up in those, like, he can't keep fish places. Catching, catching big, beautiful um, trophy trout he's on an his amazing fly rod fly on guy. the regular. But... Um, when it comes to salmon, it's just not really his world. And uh, I took him down to the coast, and we did some trolling. And I, I remember a day or two after this trip, he hit me up. And um, for being a fly fishing purist, this kind of says a lot. He was like, you know, man, it's not fly fishing. <laughs> but I had so much fun the other day just driving <laughs> around the bay, catching crabs and salmon all day. It was amazing. So this was filmed when it was like prime time, bay, salmon, catching. How many guys catch that day? Um, four, four maybe. Look at this cheesy. That guy doesn't smile ever. Yeah, look, look at, at that, that guy. Wow, what a fish too. What a memory. Blood on the decks. Yeah, you see how bloody the bow was? I bet that was fun to wipe down. Right? <laughs> That was that was some of the uh, awesome awesome catches we got for the 2021 season. You know, it's almost Christmas now. We're rolling up on 2022. We have huge plans, guys. Huge plans, huge announcements. Um, we're gonna join forces with a couple people. Um, we're gonna do a lot more uh, YouTube creator connections with some other channels. Um, you know, I know Wet Bacon Fishing wants to do a drop. Uh, Eric the Fishner wants to do a drop. Yeah, we'll probably connect you know, with Eric at some point. We got a lot of big plans for 2022. We're going to step it up for you guys. Even just seeing all these fish, that was pretty cool right there. So I'm looking forward to what happens over the next uh, rest of the winter, spring, and summer. Definitely. So Definitely. stay tuned to the bite for all kinds of fun fishing action because I'm sure we're going to be topping all of these fish. These won't even 2022 make 2022 uh, is going to be huge. These won't even make the best of the channel reel by 2025. So, All right, guys. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. We'll catch you guys on the flip side. Go check out any of our social meds. We got the links below. And uh, go check us out at theendlessbite.com. You can see the merch market there. Get yourself all fitted out with some fresh gear, hats, shirts, all of it. Thank you. See you guys on the next one.